Nick, let's have Nick do whatever intro he wants. It'd be a fun way to start. You hate this. I do. It's great. You love it. You are listening to The Building Code, your guide. I knew I was going to screw that up. <laughs> That's close. Who was that? You got it? Your guide to Is that building. that my voice? <laughs> no, that was a Nick Your, your voice. guide to a better way. Your guide to a better way of building your business. It's good. I like that. Yeah. Or maybe we could just start episodes from now on. Just we start. always cold and then I do know. it at the end. Yeah. yeah. We talk The modern this. craftsmen, great. Uh, yeah, they always start cold. You like the banjo, awesome. too? Yes, I like it all. That guy recorded that in my office. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Well, we need music. I've been telling you about that. I want uh, a new jam. Yeah, we got a new we're jam. We're working on it. Yeah. Stay tuned for our post-IBS hey, podcast. Did, did you jam. pick up on our uh, sonic branding that we, we came up with? Doug came up with? No. no. What's that? Sonic branding. Do you know what sonic branding is? Like no. trademarking. Yeah, through. like a noise. Yeah. Like that everyone hears and it's all of a sudden like, oh, I know who that is. Yeah. Like in, in, if I say Intel computers, you know yeah. what that ding, 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 ding? Yep. ding? Yeah. That's Sonic yep, Brand. I know that. So I, I had said. I to think Doug, we just had to pay them five bucks for that. By yep, the way. Oopsie daisy. Yeah, we'll yeah. cut that out. So. I had it right on cue, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was talking to Doug about it, and I'm like, we got to come up with something. Sure. And it's like, well, you can't use a saw because that's just dumb. <laughs> and he, I don't, I can't remember how he came up with it, but I think one of the guys had a tape measure out, and he had it strung oh. out, and he let it let go, and he went. Whoosh, and he heard that, and he recorded it. And so, if you listen to our videos, yep. at the beginning, it starts with that. Every video. I like so when it. you when you're scrolling Instagram, you get the sound on. Yeah. You hear the. Whoosh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Then you know. When did you start doing that? Because I haven't noticed that. Uh, probably four months ago. You know the problem is when you know, I, well you also have the sound off, so right. then you hit the sound. I right. always do that. So yeah. you have it. We play it again at the end, but we we play it so. Because in the beginning, you kind of want it to go slow to fast, and then at the end, we have it go from fast to slow. I like, like that. on the outro. Sure. That's always my problem build with in, Instagram. I, I never have my sound on, because I'm usually like in a place where I don't want the volume to go crazy yeah. when I'm doing Instagram stories. Like right. a church. <laughs> like church. Yeah. When I'm supposed to be having like paying attention to my kids. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm just kidding. I love them. My, uh, yeah, and <laughs> your wife's like, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing yeah, working. Nothing. I heard you. I heard the story. Yeah. I heard stories going. Yeah. Exactly. I heard you're, Nick's it, voice. That's how you, you get were caught. Sk- you were skipping. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you get caught. Yeah. Well, they should have like an automatic, uh, like closed caption on those then. If like the sound's off. So we talk about that all the time. That's why. Yeah. So most of our videos that we do on Instagram, they don't, we don't talk. It's very just like process oriented, right. but, sure. but interesting enough to like understand what's going on. But we talk, we, we talk about um, transcribing videos all, you know, you a lot. You should totally do that. Yeah. I love that when that yeah. happens. Because, again, I think we're so, all the same. We're all not listening volume 100% of the time. The so. Thing, Absolutely. So we're, we're going to be launching um, a different kind of video series, more towards the like, business side and like marketing and sales and, what, and kind of what works for us. That's smart. And that's where we're gonna, you know, we'll put a heavy push on LinkedIn because um, that's where that, that audience is. And we'll transcribe that. Where transcribing like a video of us doing baseboard it's just no one's watching that video and gonna read like oh now he's coping it's you know you're watching that as like a video to be interested in and right. listening to it agreed you yeah. know the transcribe could almost be like you know your principles of a presentation like it doesn't have to be the words you're saying right it's the concepts you're talking about like yeah the bullet points he's done a few and i was like dude how long did that take you he's like actually not long i'm like what do you mean he's like i put my phone Hey, yeah. or like in voice dictation, played yep. the video, yep. and it just dictated the the, the, the video. Like, oh. there's some words that you don't say properly, so then it's like you just go back and edit. yeah, it puts like cucumber in the in, in random places, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big cucumber. I don't know why I chose <laughs> cucumber. cucumber but that's a weird one. <laughs> so, yeah. It was just I, I was I, I had to think of something random. That was pretty random. <laughs> yeah, that was. What there word gets mistaked for cucumber? <laughs> I don't you know what? It, know. Oh, you know what it is? It's uh, I'm blushing. I can feel it. Oh um, yeah. Uh, autocorrect. Sometimes it's right. like, damn it, autocorrect, and then I've had it correct. Auto cucumber. <laughs> That's exactly why. I oh, that. when you say when you actually type in autocorrect, yeah, saying that they autocorrected you, yeah, and then, then it, it goes cucumber. correct has changed the cucumber on me. Oh, people yeah. will feel that. Yeah. That's gonna be shared right. shared yeah. pain there. Cool. There's your there's your one minute clip. All right, that cool. was teaser. There you I go. love it for the episode. Right <laughs> for there. the episode. Stay so tuned. So if, if you don't know yet, we're here with. Have we even announced him? No. We're here with Nick Schiffer. Yeah. This is what happens when you don't do an introduction. You cannot handle it, the, <laughs> Tom. The, it is okay. Okay. You, you are such a control person. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I think the sonic way, branding really. Way. They sure. were like, "Oh, this must be Nick." Yeah, that's, that's right. Good. They, well, they heard so. the. Whoosh. You basically should just sonic brand your voice. Ooh. Oh. Oh. So, oh. Well. To, 
elaborate on the sign of branding, you also can't uh, trademark it. Yeah. Applied for that, and they they sent me a nice decline letter. Yeah. yeah doesn't they're really like, does. yeah, you can't. That's you can't own that sound. I'm like, I made that sound. Well, someone made that sound. Somebody. Yeah. yeah. But I love it though. I mean, it does it does uh, evoke emotion. Yeah. When you when you get that, we talk about it all the time in the podcast. Like, yep. It's why radio stations do segments, right? It's kind of the same thing. Like, you can you can expect it. You sort of know what you're about to get into, and it, it creates a feeling every time. We so in case segments. it wasn't clear, we've got Nick Schiffer on the podcast. Thank I've just been holding that in for like five <laughs> Jeez, minutes. Tom, thank you, thank, just got thank you for later. having me. Yes. Can we get Tom a beer from the Village Trimble? <laughs> <laughs> Nick, thanks for coming back on the podcast. Of we really enjoyed talking with yeah. you and love seeing you, following you on social media. If you're not following Nick on social media, you need to be. Where yeah. would you love them to follow you? All the places. Name yeah, one. I mean, Instagram is definitely where we spend most of our time sure. at NS Builders. Uh, we've been putting a lot of content out on YouTube. Um, and then this year, I think we're, I mean, obviously our podcast, the Modern Craftsman Podcast as well. Um, you know, partnered up with John and Tyler, but you know, LinkedIn and you know, Facebook are, are something that we're focusing a little bit more on this year. Interesting. Uh, for different reasons. Yeah. Um, to, you know, to, to touch different segments of what our industry. Um, obviously, there's a client-driven motive behind it, but there's also uh, the big picture of what we do and why we promote what we do in the the craft is for you know industry um, betterment. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we love working with you because we're the same thing. Obviously, like you said, business. We want to make money. We want to expand our product usage across build tra- or construction. But there's a real opportunity to lift the entire industry up. Yeah, and it's cool to be a part of it. Honestly, like I mean, that's why that's why I'm sitting at this table. Like that's why we've we've become friends. And right. Like, and, and hang, I think we're friends, right? We're we friends. are absolutely right, cool. friends. Yeah. You guys are getting tighter than me because you went out and did some video. I did. You guys, you guys, I can just picture it that, in my head. He flew yeah. a drone in, a, in an area. I was like, I don't know if we can fly here. And he looks at, he's like, I got the okay. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That means that we got it. Commsworth, fly. right? Yeah. Commonwealth Ave. Yeah. Commonwealth. Yeah. Commonwealth Ave. Well, my point is, is like, I, you know. We, we we were all friends together, and then you guys just went and did your own thing. <laughs> oh, and you so in my head, I was doing like one of those one of those scenes where it's like you guys are <laughs> those laughing, mo- yeah. you're out running to through dinner. the fields, yeah. yeah, okay, <laughs> Boston Square, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm not jealous. Sure, a little bit. That's okay. You can come next time. Yeah, we'll think, go back. I think it's super important. I mean, that's you know, from even when the company was just me, it was always about me doing like. It was me and one guy, and we had to do the best that we could because we wanted to be the best that we could, but also share with, you know, what we learned and what we messed up on, and you know how we grew, and you know, and hopefully help someone. Um, and now that's compounded by my team, and now it's them really teaching the technical side of it. Yeah. Where, you know, my focus in you know communicating with other people, it's been about culture and the company, because you know what people struggle with is hiring great people Mm -hmm. and you know I'm I'm fortunate enough to have amazing people that work on our team and it that you know I realized that it was based on what we were promoting the the culture that we promoted the what the the opportunities that we were giving people you know despite the 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 investment you know financially Yeah. yeah you know what's funny is like when people talk about they have trouble hiring people they always put it on the pool of candidates Right. Like there's nobody there. Well, maybe you should look at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> right. Turn like, that how, mirror back around. Right. How yeah. are you, how are you posting the jobs? What are you saying in the jobs? Right. What's your office look like? Nobody wants to work That's there. That's not true. My nobody office is there. terrible. Is it is, is it bad? Uh, I guess. Well, I guess mine's not an like your best friend Tom would know better than me. How's his uh, office? It's a work in progress, yeah, but in the house. workshop is really yeah, magical. Yeah. yeah it That's is the good. best. Because you do your own cabinets and things, yeah. so you guys yeah. have a huge workshop. Yeah. You got to focus on the good part. Huge. It's pretty small. But it, it is, it's it, like, it's great. Like the, the guys in there have done a great job of setting it up. Um, Tom messed around with the garage door for like 35 minutes getting the light right for the shot. But <laughs> hey, but it looks great. It, I mean, it, it, it I looks, watched that video. I'm like, man, that garage door is perfect. I mean, the, the video is so good. Honestly, no, it, your portion cool. of it, all the shots and you guys walking the job site was cool. I keep, I keep seeing up on the 40 foot billboard up yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah, your big face is up there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Good. Yeah. You know you've made it when you're on a 40 yeah, foot LED wall. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. So we're at we're at the IBS. Obviously, these are all a series. So day two and a half. Were you here yesterday? I was. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think this year, just in general, and then any products? Have you seen anything, dude? Honestly, I mean, my 
so Ken and Nick are with me this year, uh, as well as Doug. The other Nick. The other Nick. The other yeah. Nick. Uh, and Doug and I have been busy with events and a couple speaking engagements and working with vendors and, and things like that, uh, which has been super fun for me personally, um, kind of stepping outside of my comfort zone, speaking alone in front of people. Uh, I had to put a PowerPoint together. I haven't Ooh. done a PowerPoint since middle school. It's tough. I did a terrible job. Well, we have a great team. I, I, I literally have yeah. no idea how to yeah, build PowerPoints. My, my graphic designer, I was casually mentioning it mentioning it he's like dude i would have done it for you i'm like right. good to know next time yes um but the show's the show is great and what was really cool to see is last uh, yesterday there was a big meetup and it was yeah. you know it was dri driven around social media and like the the crowd that you know kind of hangs out there um and the fact that there was so many people there you know based compared to last year and then an hour after it was done like people were still hanging out and there was just this you know a, this massive amount of positivity floating around and people talking and, and, ta and communicating and, and networking. It was just super, super cool. So for me, that's, you know, that's what this is about. Yeah. Uh, my team's bouncing around, you know, networking, but, you know, they're focused on kind of, kind of really developing personal relationships with the vendors that we work with and we want to work with. Yeah. Um, I, I think about when I, the first time I was here, all I tried to do is walk and see everything. It's like, what do I, I don't need to see everything. I just, I need to come and develop relationships with people that, you know, I'm not, not that I need to get a deal or, or they give me something or I give them something. It's, I just need a relationship with this person because this isn't a product I use. And when I run up against the wall and with an issue, who do I call? Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. We're like, we're not going backwards, but it's like full circle. Like we spent all these, all these years communicating ele electronically so much that now we got we got to get back to going mm. it is really important to meet somebody face to face yeah sure you know what i mean like that's yeah. what this is about now the other thing is from an outside perspective the whole uh, online community that you're a huge part of it's growing big huge. like i can just see it i'm watching it from the outside more and more people are here just for the instagram meetups with you guys yeah and that networking so that's it's, it's funny. It's a ball rolling downhill pretty fast. You, you mentioned uh, full circle in the communication, right? So I haven't, I haven't actually talked to a lot of people about this, but recently uh, we had this guy on our podcast, Tattoo Fly Guy, and he, he he's part of this corporation for fly fishing for veterans. Okay, um, yeah. He was on our podcast for a couple of minutes talking, you know, about his, you know, it was for Veterans Day. We had him on, and a week later in the mail, I get a thank you note for having him on the podcast. And meanwhile, like I, I do a pretty good job about email follow ups, thank yous, thanks for the opportunity. Hey, I heard I lost the job, it's okay, thank you. Like, I'm pretty good about that. Stopped it. I ordered a thousand branded postcards, and every person I meet with, like architect or just anyone, past clients, I get to my office, I write a note, I throw it in the mail. Huge. And it's because when I, I remember opening that, and I never even reached out to him, I, and, I, and I think about that fact that I should be reaching now out to <laughs> him. You should send him a thank you. I should like schedule coffee yeah. with him to say thank you for the thank well, you. Well, maybe you, you guys have a thank you off. Yeah. And it's just like, <laughs> just thank you. You're, no, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, thank you. No, no, no. But, yeah. but I remember the way I, I felt opening is, totally is great. and it's like, we, you're absolutely right. This we're we're so digital that you are losing this personal touch. Where, I you know now I send it and there, a few people reached out and was like, I, we bought a car like or we just re up the lease on my wife's car, and I sent a thank you note. Hey, thanks for you know making that process easy. Look forward to working with you in the future. He was like, dude, no one in my entire career has ever thanked me like that. Thanked me, yeah. Right, and I was like, cool man. That's huge. Like dude. I totally agree coming with that. soon to Builder Trend. <laughs> Yeah. The ability to digitally create this and then physically send it out. We're going to partner with somebody. You're going to have 400 kids like, writing 170. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, well, today. Yeah. <laughs> the our, product team is going to hate me. Our for intern program is going to be bad. <laughs> we need more stamps. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the penmanship. You know, yeah. It was a 17-year-old. Speaking of customer experience, though, you had a panel yesterday with we our co-founder, yeah. Dan Houghton. Oh, that's right. Uh, just a shameless plug. We're going to have it, a little snippet of that okay. panel. On the podcast, so stay tuned. Like for this the next podcast, episode. our podcast. This we're episode, gonna, we're gonna not this episode. Okay, so you gotta stay tuned. I forgot. Gotta I, tuned. I gotta look at the schedule. <laughs> you, so I had time. Okay, so we've got that coming up. So stay tuned to get more of Nick and his expertise on customer experience. But bringing that back around to the customer experience, bring around to the the people of this. We talked a little bit about talent earlier. You've got great talent. You've got Molly. You got Nick. You got Doug here. You know. What's, what's your advice to those listening 
on how they can attract top talent. Attracting top talent. Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's a lot to it, but simply put, the the culture in which you promote. Well, first off, it should be real. It shouldn't. You shouldn't be promoting fake culture. Sure. Right? And I think that's where people are promoting a culture and then living up to a, a lesser ex, uh, a lesser. Hundred uh, percent. A lesser thing, right? Um, yep. You know the really understanding what brings people value. Um, you know, I, I can, I'm going to talk personally about what we do, right? So one thing I realized is like the work-life balance and separating work and life. And I realized that when I had kids yep. and I talked, we talked about this recently on a, one of our episodes is that, you know, one thing I implemented is I got rid of my, my work phone when I get home. My work phone stays in my work bag off, yep. not on the counter. So I walk by and touch the screen to see if I have a notification off away. Yeah. We talked about that a little bit when I was there that you have two separate phones. Yeah. And, and so that was huge. And that was the, one of the first steps. And I, and I really told my guys, I'm like, everyone gets a, a phone allowance because you're expected to answer the phone when I, when I call or when anyone calls or, e and you all have emails, but the phone allowance is to pay for that phone. And if you want a personal phone, I would encourage you to get your own phone. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And separate it. But you know, but the culture within the company is that, you know, like for our, our time off, you know, we have, we take, we take Christmas Eve all the way to New Year's Day off. Yeah, mandatory. And mandatory. I love that. Mandatory around uh, the week of July 4th. Yeah. And then they're accruing vacation on top of it because that's time to recharge. Yeah. We, you, like it needs to be, it, that has to be the case. Yep. You know, having the opportunity to do your very best work, but when you mess up, you know, it's all right. But like, you know, it's not okay if you keep messing up and doing the same thing, but let's, let's work through this and figure out why, like, why did you mess up? What did we, did we do something wrong? Sure. And being okay with the understanding that the investment in those mistakes will, you know, net some, a, a better result. Totally. But I think really just, you know, promoting the positivity behind all of that. You know, there is a lot of negative in this, in this industry. There's a lot of, you know, hard things that we deal with, yep. you know, what, what, can, you know, construction is, is, you know, organized organization of hundreds of humans with yeah. all their baggage and issues mm -hmm. to net a, a product that people expect to be perfect. Yep. Yeah. That's and a really good summary of that. Cause like, and it's like, well, first off, it's mission impossible. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. We have a lot of things working against us. Never mind the, the human aspect of it. Right. But the, I really think like, you know, to, to summarize a positive, you know, people focused culture is what, you know, is really important. Sure. And to do that as a business owner, you probably got to have a, a pretty hard conversation with yourself, a real look, real hard. What is our, what is our culture? Yeah. What is important to me? What kind of things am I driving by the policies I've put in place? Really hard. Yeah. It's, it I mean, there. yeah, it's, I, I take, you know, I would say that I take a lot of risk on people. You know, and because I see, I'm, I'm impatient as a person, but I understand that what, I, what I'm doing and what we're doing as a team isn't about tomorrow. It, it's, this is longer than that. And, you know, some of these, some of the team might, you know, might not have any experience or really struggles with things, but that's all right. Like if you're, if you're driven and you're going to, if you're going to work towards it, like I'll help. I'm cool with that. Like yeah. it's, you know, I, we, I want to touch on something because recently um, a gentleman had asked, you know, he's in, I think he was a stone fabricator and he has a guy that's been with him for 40 years. Really great fabricator. Sure. Uh, amazing fabricator. And he, uh, he's got laborers that work in the stone shop as well. And he was talking about those guys that they don't really know what's like, they can't really polish stone. They're just, they're just laborers. So when, when the shop's clean, they send them home and they might not get 40 hours for the week. And he's like, and then he switches and he's like, but I'm not really sure like what happens when, you know, Dave, you know, like when he retires or he quits, I'm like, are we not making the connection here? Like the laborer should be working with Dave when he's done with his job for the two hours, pay him yeah. 40 hours and let, teach him like you, you spent all that time developing Dave and the, what you're not doing is developing someone in the coattails of him yep. to, right. to, to continue that. And that's what I think a lot of people forget is they build these companies 
and they build these teams and these these cultures of great people but they're not there there's no what happens when someone transitions into a new role yeah. Yeah, you know it's away. like you're re, you, you can't just restart and start from zero then your company is literally restarting yeah you need to you it needs to be a coattail thing yep and that is you know that's really important and I well, mean yeah, I mean, I think what's really great just to make it full circle is sometimes you need another business owner to see your blind spots. Absolutely. Like, and that's what's yeah. great about networking because it, maybe it, that seems very obvious to us hearing yeah. the story. It's like, well, geez, of course, come on. Yeah. But like it, when you're in the mix and you're in the, in it, like that's tough. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think you're absolutely right. And that's, you know, that's what I love about networking. Um, but that's what I love about even more than networking with builders, networking with people outside of our industry and taking, you know, it, it, what's nice about it is it's not, it's almost not directly related. It's like, well, you build specs and I build custom homes. Like, it's different. Where it's, no, you're running an ad agency and I'm running a construction business, but I can see how that it was successful and I'm only taking the points of, you know, the building the culture, not the fact that you build specs for us customers. Right. Yeah. And that's where it's like, that's what's been super interesting for us recently is that we've taken a lot. I mean, look at Doug. I know. I mean, Doug's the, great. The, we're looking well, at Doug right now. We're looking at Doug. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Doug. Doug. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I, the reason he was, he, he was even a thought in the beginning is because I was looking at other industries bringing video to what they do. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't know a construction company that has a videographer, but I really like Doug and I want him to hang out. So let's do this. So he was. You were telling that story in our last podcast yep. that he wasn't full time then. Yeah, you'd been talking to him, yeah. and like you're just like, forget it. Like, we'll figure out how to get you paid, and it was May. we'll figure it all yeah. out. That's really cool. Yeah, it, we sat down, and I was like, Doug, I really like. You know, there was par partly he did a video for another builder, and it was like, ooh, well, no, solid no, choice, Doug. No, but he, he rightfully that, that's so. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it like did a great job, and I'm like, it's not that I didn't like that fact that no he did that what I, I was like his like his creativity is so in line with who we are and you know and what I see this company doing is that I want this to be us and we had multiple conversations and finally I was like dude let's just figure this out like he we were talking yesterday and people always ask like oh, how does like how does this work like how does this work financially yeah and he like he's not gonna answer that and I'm right. like and I said to him yesterday I'm like I don't know either and I was like well, let me correct that I do know it's not like, but everyone's looking for the ROI. It's sure. Like, give me the, give me, give me the numbers. Right. And I'm like, there it's is tough. no numbers. It's like, what's the numbers of you spending four hours on Instagram a day? Right. right. Mm -hmm. It's like this is, you know, what I see is there. There's value in what he showcases on the team. Is these guys are now looking at themselves on video and in, on the camera and seeing that they're. This is cool, man. I didn't like, even think about that part of it. That's the see well, that's that cool. everyone over like. When these guys come on, they feel as though they're under a microscope at first, but then they start getting super proud of what they do right. and can't wait for it to be showcased. Yep. And that's what gets that's them really cool. excited. And then it's like, he's going to be here. I got this new idea and I'm going to do it on camera. Yeah. And that's, wow. it's, it's, that has, that continues to develop that, that culture. I never yeah. thought about that. That's and awesome. The, and the brand that you're building too. Of course, I right. mean, that's, you know, you're looking for ROI. Look no further than the fact that your reach of how many people know you and what that looks like. Right, listen, it's brand awareness, you know, it is educating our consumer as to the value that we bring to them in yep. the processes that we take. It's culture, you know, it, it's, you know, developing the culture. And then it's looking at the industry and asking everyone, hey, step your step your crap up. Absolutely. Like, step we're, you know, we're, we're not perfect, but we're chasing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I love it. Makes so sense. it's 2020. It is. We're thinking about you know, what's this year look like? It's January. Still thinking about resolutions, I guess. You know, we talked about, hey, let's set your business up for success. Maybe find somebody, uh, a partner in crime almost, that you could say, hey, what, what, what do I need to work on in my business? So what's it look like for you? What's 2020 look like for your business? What are you looking forward to? Um, I would say continuing to refine the team. Um, someone, uh, one of the guys asked, are we hiring anyone this year? And I quickly said no. <laughs> and then... They said, are we firing any, anyone this year? And I slowly said no. Whoopsie daisy. And he, he was like, wait, what? Yeah. I'm like, no, no, I just, I, I haven't thought of that. Um, what I have thought a lot about is that I started my company as a carpentry company. I grew into a remodeling company. The remodeling company is now growing into a general contracting company. The general contracting company became a general contracting and cabinet company. And what I have always wanted to do is, is build and renovate entire homes like build brand new homes and 
and what has been the focus for me is that you know social media has been great at showcasing who we are with the micro details but now i need to start stepping back and showcasing that this is part of something bigger yeah we're not just building cabinetry we're mm -hmm. not just doing interior trim like we're building homes and so this year there's going to be a heavy focus on you know developing the the i'm using air quotes the funnel of attracting those right clients yeah mm -hmm. because that has been you know to to be candid that's been the biggest struggle is like cor not correcting but I, when when people see it as a carpentry company, they're going to call for carpentry work. Yeah. And then it, and when we, when we became complacent with that, we shifted into remodeling and then we, you know, and continued to shift. So we keep getting comfortable and then taking another step up and then we're redefining our clientele. Yeah. That's, so that's, it's, I'm hoping that, you know, in, in, in a way that 2020 is kind of the, the last I, I'm saying this knowing it's not true. <laughs> the last, I was going to say the last, the, time. the last change, right? Sure. Um, but it's where, you know, I, what I look at it is the, the team and myself, we're, we've put a significant amount of work into what we do and we want to now focus on, the, on, on, on bringing on the projects that we are truly passionate about doing. Yeah. So that's really I, cool. I just want to figure out a way to clone you and put one of you <laughs> in every state because I think everybody needs an that's NS a, that, builders. That's, that's an amazing compliment. Yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. it's true. I, again, it's, it's very refreshing when you talk about the industry, your business, the way you think about it. Honestly, God, it's super true. And we've talked about the. I mean, we talked about this offline. You know, working on projects in we're our own homes. We are best friends. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, working on projects. Like, how often do you guys talk <laughs> offline? Like. <laughs> What is going we'll invite on? you to the next hangout. You guys, you guys are sending thank you notes to each other like all day long. I don't what's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. So, <laughs> I mean, the, the level of detail you put in your projects shows that it's possible to do it. I think so. it's it's so quickly that we all just kind of write off like, it's construction. It doesn't have to be like perfect science. Right. And, you know, there's no such thing as absolutely being 100% perfect, but we can strive for that. And that's what's so great to see is your strive for excellence and see you deliver that excellent product to your customers. Right. I mean, that's what people trip up on is that, you know, we're not, we're, we're not perfect. And, yeah. we, you know, there's guys that are significantly better than us. Right. But what, as individuals, all I'm asking is that you're giving all of the effort, like 100% effort into it. And I'll ask that straight up and I'll look at someone like, hey, is that like, could you have done that better? Yeah. Okay. Then do it again. Like if that's the best you can do, then like, listen, that's all I'm going to ask. But like, you're going to, I need you to do the best that you can do every time because you're, you're going to incrementally get better if Absolutely. you're doing that. Yeah. You know, I think the complacency in this industry, uh, I think it's shrinking, Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. which is nice, but that, that I think for a long time it was, everyone was in their bubble. So it was easy to be complacent. Right. You know, there, there's a lot of disruptions now. Yeah. There's a you lot put of some people, light on stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. All right. There's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of things being showcased that are, are, are kind of weeding that stuff out. Yeah. Sure. Which has I been mean, great. We, you just talked about how you can get comfortable in doing what you're doing and then you got to shake it up. Right. You know, so that way you're making sure you're delivering the right thing for your, yeah. your clients. Yeah. You told a story last time about having to rip out an entire kitchen. Have you done that yet? I, I did rip it out. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know you would. You had said you were going to, but yeah. So that that it's over. Yeah, I forgot. Um, man, I forgot that I hadn't done it yet. So yes, and it uh, wasn't even. It was all right. So it wasn't I, perfect, but it was good enough. All right. So I talked about this yesterday uh, at a talk, and I I had never done the math until I put together this PowerPoint. Hey, right? there you go. And come to find out, we had lost. It was a hundred seventy thousand dollar job, and it cost me forty five thousand dollars to redo that to like out of pocket. So we wouldn't, we, we weren't making 45 grand on this job. So right. that was, a, that was a big red, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was basically in a, up on one of those slides I had said, you, you, you have a few options. You could have fixed it and it would have been passable and the client would have been okay with it and kind of, kind of called a spade a spade. And you know, we probably wouldn't have got a negative review from it. It probably would have been pretty neutral. Um, and we would have walked away, no pictures and, and, and been okay. But what what does that what does that say to us and what does that say to like my guys? It's well he let that slide so we'll, we'll just let this slide and then you know I, I dig into like it's a slippery slope to mediocrity yeah and I've never set out to be mediocre at anything like that's not my style I want 
if I'm going to do something, I want to do it as best as I can, as, you know, and that that was ultimately a decision. The decision. We never even thought about the, the money behind it. Right. Beyond the fact that we can't afford to do it right now, let's figure out like let's squeeze this in incrementally. Let's re- squeeze this in, you know, uh, over time and figure out when this, you know, when this will actually yeah. work for our schedule yeah. and for our, us financially. When you talk about that, I'm not a business owner, but I've been really close to this business since the beginning, and I, I've talked to enough business owners. I really like your honesty about financial decisions, like because you don't. It sounds sometimes like if there's this pot of money. I'm sure people listen like, well, yeah, if I had a pot of money, I'd fix everything. All right, so that but came you're up. really real about it. You're like, I'm gonna fix it at some point. Right. So that came up, and someone was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, obviously, you have a, you know, you can afford to do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, we can't. It's not that we could afford to do it. All right, let me put this in a different way. If you can't afford to do it, then let's figure out like communicate to the client that you're going to you'll be back to to figure you know you'll be back to do this when you can that's what i mean we're all human and i guarantee that connected with your clients no yeah. matter what yeah they, i mean at the end of the day we replaced it we we actually gave them a better product than we originally planned because we were like listen let's just pull out all the tricks now uh, and we ended up you know delivering a product that they were incredibly happy with that they now reviewed us they uh, referred us there the arch- the architect pulled us aside and said listen you know you didn't have to do that. I, I don't know anyone that would have done that. You know, this is this says a lot about you guys. And then on top of that, we filmed it. We filmed ripping it out, and, oh, I, nice. and I posted it on social media. Nice. And we talked about it. And then I had a, I, I got a phone call the next day, and he was like, "Hey, you don't know who I am. My name's Jim. I just saw the video you posted. This is insane. Like I've I've known guys that rip out their work. You just told the entire world that you you screwed something up." And then you film, you spent the money to film it, edit it, and put it on social media, and, and put yourself on blast. And I laughed, and we, we ended up ch- chatting for a while, but I was like, but that's a big question that homeowners have. It's like, well, what happens if this goes wrong? Yeah. Like, what happened? Like, what if the, what if this job goes sideways? Like, what do you, like, what kind of person are you? Yep. And here, now, now you have your answer. Now you have evidence to show right. them, yeah. or at least speak to. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's good stuff. We could talk for hours. I know. Just you and him, or yeah. all three of us, because well, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> I know you guys. Are You're just gonna milk that joke. I'm, for the I'm not. Whole it's not a joke at this point. Now it really hurts. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna go fix this offline with okay, Paul. Good, we're gonna yeah. have a little kumbaya session. Nick, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it, guys. We love having you here. We'd love to have you back again sometime. So yeah, we'll figure out a time to get you back on so we can talk some more about Builder Trend. And I think I'll see you guys in March. Cool. Mm-hmm. BTU. You coming in? You coming again? Bring in a couple new guys. All right. Well, not new guys. New guys to beat to you. Okay. That'll be awesome. So I'll see you then. Stay tuned. We'll go out, t- out on the town. That's right. Or maybe you guys will. <laughs> you can come too. Bro. All right. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate you guys. Thanks. Appreciate Thank you. you. Love what you heard? Don't forget to rate and subscribe to our podcast so you can hear from more guests that will benefit your business. Also, please check out our show notes page for more information on what we discussed on this episode. You can find it at buildertrend.com slash podcast. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on The Building Code. Appreciate you.